recording here because sometimes these gadgets are not working, but I got to back up. We got to learn how to do a black up. Hallelujah. I see brother Aram Khalid is a child of the Most High King, and that's all we look for up on in, in these here places in the broadcast is somebody that is serving the Lord. Praise God. So we are Oh, you're, oh, you're the brother that has the ministry in uh, Pac uh, um, Pakistan? Pakistan, I think. Yeah, I have another brother that has a Pakistan ministry also. He does Bibles and this and that. And every now and again, I'm able to send him a little something. But he lately ain't been able to send nobody nothing. Because I be trying to take care of me and people here at home. And I do have people that I do support regularly. But my dollars done got real slim. My dollars done got real slim. I done dibbied out as much as I can dibby out. And I got to kind of reserve some for me and from emergencies. If I hear emergency need, and I go and break off a piece. Hey, my baby in Australia in the house. God bless you, daughter. How are you today? Tomorrow. <laughs> How are you today? Tomorrow. Because Jessica is in Australia and... Today is tomorrow. Already here in Australia, she's already experiencing tomorrow. And we're still trying to finish today. Isn't that amazing? It's, it's wonderful the way God has done that and how he orchestrated and bringing everybody together. Everybody over here on my Live Me platform. Everybody over here on my Meet Me platform. Not sure what's going on with the Meet Me platform today, but it's, it's, it's broadcasting. It's doing whatever it do. I have so many gadgets and and so Pakistan, okay, Pakistan, right, right, right. Uh, now many knees, they have no Christmas clothes and shoes. Please pray. Um, you know, any time of the, see, people get hung up on this Christmas thing. I'm not one to be hung up on Christmas because people have needs every day. Every day, people have needs. And I try to provide needs every day. I don't just serve and minister and put a call out on Christmas because they we got needs and they got needs. It's Christmas time. Christmas time, we should we should be teaching our children. We should be teaching our adults what Christmas is all about. It is not our birthday. We don't, we're not supposed to get no new shoes and no new clothes and I got to get me a new this and I need a new that on Christmas. That is not our birthday. That's Jesus' birthday. And so on that day, whatever you have, whether you get some gifts or not, I'm going to be here in my house, me and my husband. And I have four children, 14 grandchildren and 10 great grandchildren. Ain't going to see near one and probably ain't going to get a gift from near one. But that doesn't make the day vile any, any less significant because that's the day. Now, that is not the day that our Lord and Savior was born. No, he was, but the cattle was lowing. That wasn't in the winter time. That was over in the spring, over in April or May, they say, is when Jesus actually was born. But we're not going to debate when he was born. Very hot. Wow. Jessica says it's hot over there in Australia. It's very, very, very cold over here in California. And it's not supposed to be. It's the climate change. But Christmas is a time of, again, the season. People get hung up, oh, this ain't even when... When Jesus was born, just ain't even when he was born. No, it is not. But it is a time or summer in Australia. <laughs> Isn't that something the way the, the way God made this thing? We the world is wonderfully and marvelously made. God made this thing. I'm not gonna fly to Diane. Okay, okay, okay. Um Christmas, regardless when it was, whether it was in the April or May or whichever month that Jesus was born. First of all, we all agree he was born. You hear on my side, that means you're a Christian. You believe, you agree that Jesus was born. But then the second thing that we are in agreement is that this is a time of the year that people all over the world celebrate our Lord and Savior's birth. Not that it's necessarily on December the 25th, but that is when we set aside time to honor, memorialize the birth of our Lord and Savior. So it's a time that we shouldn't be looking for gifts. 
We shouldn't be looking to see who going to get what. I got to get you a gift. I got to get me a gift. They better. They got to get me a gift. What they going to get to Smirk Ministry? What they going to give me? That is not what this season is all about. New clothes and new shoes. and We got to have this and a big old meal. We got to learn to be thankful for what we have. Thankful that we have our life, our health, and our strength. Thankful that we have a meal to eat. It may not be a big meal. Bountiful meal. It could be something as simple as me and my husband on our anniversary a year or two ago, we had a peanut butter jelly sandwich and a glass of milk on our anniversary. And we will always remember that day. The, the, the day that the, the um, when we talk about the Christmas season, the thing that comes to my mind and the most precious season that me and my children ever had for me may not have been so much for them was a season where we had nothing. I was on disability. I'd been laid up flat on my back for a couple of years and we had no money to do anything, get no tree. But my son was 12 and he wanted a tree for his sisters and his brothers. He wanted a tree. And that child went to a lot and told somebody it was the day before Christmas, they was closing down. He told me he needed a tree because mama didn't have no money. And they gave him a nice big little tree. And he come dragging that tree home, 12 years old, trying to make a way for his brothers and sisters to celebrate the little Christmas season. And he brought the tree home, and he brought us the tree. And I said, okay, well, you got a little tree. Now, we already know what Christmas is, but you brought a tree. We're going to see what we can do to decorate this tree. At that time, he was a, 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 a postal, he um, threw the um, newspaper, newspaper. He was a newspaper boy, threw the newspapers. And we had red and green rubber bands. For the, for the season, they gave red and green rubber bands. So I mean, I'm a TT peer. I am a TT peer. Anybody that knows me, it's a part of my family, knows what TTP means. What TTP means, Jessa, Jessica, is think the process. TTP, think the process. There's a process to everything you're trying to do in life. And if you think the process, you'll be able to do it. Okay? So I said, okay, Lord, we got this. How are we going to take? What are we going to do? So we put the, uh, the rubber bands on the tree. Oh, everybody putting the rubber bands on the tree. It's kind of cute. Okay, it was different. I said, okay, let's make some popcorn strings to string around the tree. How we do that, Mama? I'll show y'all. So I popped up the popcorn. I ain't never did it before, but I seen it done. And I got us some uh, needles and everybody got their little popcorn except the baby. I think she was too young to do anything with a needle. She probably ate popcorn and got in everybody else's way. Little Pat. And we stringed the popcorn. And everybody took their little strings and we did it around the tree. And that was our little Christmas tree for that Christmas. And that was the most precious Christmas season. I was able to teach my children what the season of giving is all about. Being thankful for what you have and making it be what you want it to be. I think that year we got a couple of board games is all I could afford to get. Monopoly and Life and some, And we played board games all day. I got three minutes before 707. I pray and I go into the read. So I'm watching the time. I ain't just talking. I'm watching the time. And so that day after we did our little Christmas, then we went over my spiritual mom's house. And my spiritual mom, they got them kids gold chains. Bought, bought the girl pinball machine. A big full set pinball machine put it back there in the room pinball they had all kind of clothes and this and that and they were grumpy and fussy and unthankful and ungrateful this necklace ain't thick enough they, they, this wasn't enough didn't have enough chains on it it's some chains mama Pam I want more this wasn't enough you know what I'm saying the pinball wasn't the right one it wasn't nothing right for them. They had food galore. And so as we come in, me and the kids, they asked the kids, what you guys get for Christmas? They said, Mom bought us some nice board games, and we sure had a lot of fun. Board games? That's all y'all got? They're like, yeah. We couldn't afford to get a bunch of stuff this year. And we okay? They said, you all right? Yeah, we fine. We got each other. <sighs> Oh, I raised them well, y'all. I raised them well. I don't know what's wrong with them today, but I raised them well. Yes, I did. Anyway, my godmother had a fit. She told all of her kids, she said, let me tell all y'all something. I need to take everything back. 
because you're ungrateful. Here, these children got nothing, and they ain't. They just as happy as they could be. You know, you can tell kids got a little attitude. They didn't get nothing, and they enjoying what the other kids got. They playing with the games and this and that. So again, this is a season of being thankful. Season of Thanksgiving. Season of look at look outside of yourself and see who you can do for somebody. And we will pray for the children in Pakistan. For shoes and for this and for that. But God know about them babies in Pakistan. Because they are wonderfully and marvelously made too. We got babies in Africa. I saw somewhere on one, on, in Africa where they're eating the roots of trees to live. They have no food. So they eat the roots of trees to live. Y'all better learn how to be thankful. You better learn how to be thankful. Yes, Christmas is a time of sharing and caring, Dottie. Not looking to see what you can look and see what you can do for somebody. Coming into the first of the year, people are going to be kicked out of their homes. Can you possibly take someone in your home? It's kind of dangerous. It's kind of, you got to go with God. I got another minute. But then when you, the, the thing is, when you take people in, if they stay with you more than three days, you got to get an eviction process to get them out. Because they'll come and say, I'm going to be out in a week or two. Can I stay with you for a month? And here it is three, four months, half a year, and they're still there. And they become a nuisance now. They're not a blessing anymore. And you want them out your house. Then you got to go through a big old long expensive process. And that's what inhabits people from helping. But we still got to try to help however we can help. Yes, yes, Jessica says it. She remembers hearing uh, about a third world country. Praying over countries that had so much. Praise God. See, third world countries, they do. They pray for the countries that have plenty so that they can share. And sometimes God, as we're reading scripture, God allowed you to have much so you can bless them that have less. But when these uh, the children of Israel come through some of these lands and say, can you just feed us? And you ain't got to give us nothing to eat. Can we just labor? Can we stay here in this area overnight? No, you can't stay in our area. So God got them. So God, God, I'm in 708. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Lord, we come before you with a spirit of thanksgiving. First of all, first of all, Lord, as I sit behind this sanctified, Holy Ghost, spirit-filled area of my home at this desk, I'm speaking. And just 15 minutes ago, I couldn't, I couldn't. The the thud wouldn't come through. All last night, my voice was inhabited. Lord, I thank you that you called me and you equipped me to be your reader. And I thank you that I'm attacked. I thank you for the spiritual attack to try to shut me down so I won't come and I won't read the word of God. I thank you, oh God, that I come and I persevere every evening at seven o'clock, regardless of how I'm feeling, oh God. I get up out that bed, I put my clothes on, I comb my hair, I present myself to you, oh God, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is only your reasonable service, my reasonable service unto you, to do your work, to be presented, to, to look as well as I can before your sons and your daughters. Then when I get off, I can go on back and do whatever I can do. But Lord, I thank you that my voice is clear. That the voice is strong. Thank you, oh God. Now, Lord, as we are getting ready to get into the 25th, that's just a day. People have 365, four, 364 other days to live besides the 25th. Lord, would you help us to help them to forget about ourselves? To ask you, Lord, who shall I bless? Who can... Let me, I was going to spend a thousand dollars for my Christmas. Lord, let me go out and who, sit, tell me where to sin and bless people with a hundred dollars. Let me go into the, 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 the homeless community. Let me buy up a whole bunch of McDonald's on Christmas and, and, and give them a meal. Let me take that money and Lord, teach us, show us what to do to be a blessing, to get out of our cells. Forgive us, oh God, for being a land, the nation, the United States who has more than enough. But all we're going to give people is $600. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, 
that we tell people they got to go in, they got to shelter in place, they can't be out on the street, but all we're going to give you is $1,200 in July, and then we give you another six in December. My God, my God, my God, in a country that said we got the most of anywhere in the world, Lord, have mercy on America. We can do better than that. But nonetheless, your people who are called by your name, who are humbling themselves and praying, who are seeking your face, who are turning from our wicked ways. You are hearing from heaven and you are healing our land. I haven't heard of any of us Smurf members that's gone lacking. I haven't seen anybody gone lacking. I see people on the Facebook cooking meals and growing gardens and doing their vegetables and doing all these different other things they're doing. I ain't seeing nobody lacking. And Mama Pam surely ain't lacking. My cabinets are full because I'm always giving. I'm looking to see who I can bless. I may not be able to get out. I ain't going out the door. So I give all the money I can until I give out. Until I give out, oh God. And then you send me some more blessings. You refinish and I'll give some more. So we thank you, oh God. Lord, we have the brother on here from Pakistan that is asking for resources and asking for prayers for the children in Pakistan who have no shoes and clothes and such and such for Christmas. But, oh God, let them know if they have health, if they are healthy, if they are well, that is Christmas. That's you shining down on them. And those of us here, if we have shelter, if we are, if Corona ain't visited our house. Lord, I got news on yesterday that Corona took my 79-year-old cousin. She gone, was fine, was healthy. And then Corona knocked on our door. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I heard on yesterday that I got a little cousin, 60. Got an issue of blood. They don't know how to stop it. They don't know why he's bleeding. But oh God, oh God, oh God. So we have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. So Lord, I thank you for all of these listeners under the sound of my voice that are coming in from the north, south, east, and west from all over the world on all these 20 plus platforms. Lord, I thank you that you're coming soon because you said when the word, the word of God was read, was ministered, was spoken to all the world, then you would be coming soon. And by way of these connections and, and these gadgets and how we can just connect free. I don't have to pay no money to connect to Live Me and, and Meet Me and all YouTube and all these other places. That you are coming soon. You are coming soon soon. Lord, we thank you. So we thank you for the ears that are here to hear what the Spirit of the Living God says to these clear dirt, clay, dirt body churches. I thank you, oh God, that you live inside of us. We invite you to live inside of us, that you'd move and you have your being in us, and that that keeps the joy of the Lord being our strength. We stay joyful in you, oh God. We don't suffer like the world suffers. We don't woe is me like the world woe is me. Hallelujah. And oh God, I thank you that you give us a spirit of discernment. Somebody told me the other day, Mom, bam, you got spirit of discernment. I said, I do. Well, praise God. I pray every day for a donor here in front of everybody. Lord, give us a spirit of discernment so we can look at a thing and we can see behind that thing. Uh-uh, they ain't telling the truth. That ain't what it is. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood anyway. But it's against powers, it's against principalities, it's against the rulers of darkness of this world. And that is Satan. So we thank you. Lord, you've told us what to do in this season. Isaiah 26, 2021 20, told us to come inside and keep our hind force inside and stay until this thing be passed. And Lord, in conclusion, I want you to reach and continue to heal our beloved sister Dottie. Continue to heal her. I'm not putting a business out here, so I won't say where and what now. But Lord, we thank you that you're a healer and that you're healing her and making her every whit whole. Now, Lord, as we open our mouth and we begin to read your word, let the word come through with accuracy, with clarity, with excitement, with enthusiasm. Let me read the word of God and let the word fall upon hearts to receive and ears to hear what the Spirit says to their church. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you all the praise. We do call it done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God is so, so good. God is good. So we're over in Samuel. Let's see what done happened in Samuel. Uh-oh. I see Ichabod. 
Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. So, we read about a faithful priest on yesterday. Yesterday, we read about Samuel's call. Today was calling Samuel. The Lord was calling Samuel. Samuel thought Eli. Samuel thought his uh, the one that taught him, the priest that taught him, that Samuel thought that was who called him two, three times. And the priest said, no, I ain't calling you, boy. Go on back in your room. And the next time you hear uh, you hear the call, then say, hear my Lord. Hear my Lord. My strap showing. Ew. That's okay. That's why you wear these straps so they, okay. Praise God. Amen. All right. So we're getting ready to see what the call was all about. I told him that I will judge his house forever. Okay, yeah. Ooh. Okay, so God spoke to Samuel. After he called him, God spoke to Samuel. So now Samuel is getting ready to tell the prophet what God told him. Because this is a little kid. It's a youngster. And he got to minister to the prophet. Babies can minister to us. We can learn from a little child. We can learn some things from a little child. All right, here we go. So 1 Samuel, the third chapter, verses 14, reading from the King James Version of the Word of God. We're going to get you in and get you out on the 30. Amen. And it reads, And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli, that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice, nor offering forever. And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, here am I. And he said, what is the thing that the Lord has said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. God do so to thee and more also, if I hide anything from me of all the things that he said unto thee. And Samuel told him every wit, he had nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord, let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. Chapter 4. And the word of Samuel came to all of Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines. And they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. Oh, Jesus. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people went to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims. And the two sons of Eli and Hophni and Phinehas were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And when the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all of Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of all the shout, they said, what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. And the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. And they said, Woe unto us, for there have not been such a thing heretofore. Woe unto us, who shall deliver us out of the hand of these mighty gods. These are the gods that smote the Egyptians with all the plagues in the wilderness. And they put an S on it. They don't know it's just one God. They think it was the gods. They got an S on this here thing. Because that's what they thinking. But no, it's just our God. 
It only takes one God, our God. He is the God. Chapter 9, verse 9. But be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that ye be not servants unto the Hebrews as they have been to you. Quit yourself like men and fight. And the Philistines fought. And Israel was smitten. And they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. Praise God. And the ark of God was taken. And the two sons of Eli and Hopnia, Hopnia and Phineas were slain. As we read previously, he said they was going to die in the same day. And there ran a man of Benjamin out of the army and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes rent and with earth upon his head. And when he came low, Eli sat upon a seat by the wayside, watching for his heart trembled for the ark of God. They done took the ark from where he was. In Shiloh, remember? And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, what meaneth the noise of this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old, and his eyes were dim. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army and fled today out of the army. And he said, what what is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled from the Philistines. And there have been also a great slaughter among the people and thy two sons also. Hopni and Phineas are dead. And the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that Eli fell off the off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break and he died for he was an old man and heavy and he had judged Israel for 40 years but God said he was going to kill his two sons together and he was going to kill them too for his disobedient children verse 9 and his daughter-in-law his daughter-in-law Phineas wife was with child near to deliver. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard. She was dead. But she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. This is what the lady said. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. Chapter 5. And the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdoth. Now when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon. They Dagon God. And said it by Dagon. By they Dagon God. And when they of Ashdod arose early in the morning, behold, Dagon was falling upon his face on the earth before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon and set him in his place again. And when they arose early in the morrow morning, behold, Dagon was falling up on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord and the head of Dagon. And both the palms of his hand were cut off upon the threshold. And only the stump of the Dagon, the Dagon God, was left in him. Lord have mercy, Jesus. God avenge himself. You ain't got to do nothing. God take care of himself. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon nor any that come into Dagon's house tread on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod until this day. Because ain't no more Dagon. But the hand of the Lord was heavy upon them at Ashdod. And he destroyed them and smote them with emeralds. Even Ashdod and the coast thereof. 
And when the men of Ashdod saw that it was so, they said, The ark of God of Israel shall not abide with us, for his hand is sore upon us, and upon Dagon our God. May the Lord add a blessing to you, the hearers, and to me, the reader of this precious and sacred word of God. It was a battle of the gods. They got the day on God. They, they done stole the Ark of the Covenant and brought it to their camp. Taking it out of Israel and took it to their, their camp. And so God is showing just exactly what he think of them and their God. And then God went on to smote them. And it says, and he smote them with emeralds. Well, I looked up emeralds. Emeralds, if it's hemorrhoid, H-E-M, if it's hemorrhoids. We say hemorrhoids, Bible says erods. Then it says it could be a hemorrhoid, and then further down, it says it again, or a tumor. So God afflicted their body. There's a scripture that says, it tells where uh, the men went out to war, and God gave them a, a condition where they couldn't fight because they had diarrhea. You can't fight if you're sick. So he afflicted them. So God will fight our battles for us if we just stand still and know that God is God. So tomorrow we're going to continue reading more of what God is doing, avenging them because they don't mess with the ark of the Lord. Praise God. We don't have to worry about the ark of the Lord anymore. All we have to do is listen to this word that I'm ministering to you. Keep God in your heart because you're the church. We are now the ark of the covenant. We're carrying around the word of God. We're carrying around the good news of the gospel. When people see us, they should see the ark of the covenant. They should see love, number one, because God is love. They should see that's a, such a loving person. Mama Pam just love, 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 love. No, they should see love, but they should see it on YouTube. Not just me. They should see it on YouTube, Smurf. They should see love. They should see compassion. They should see caring. They shouldn't see arrogance and pumped up and looking down on people and talking about folks and judging and condemning. When you guys hear me judging or, or talking about stuff, I'm just trying to teach. I'm just, because it looks like some of these folks ain't been taught the way they dress, the way they look. I'm looking, I look at, uh, uh, what's the child name, Candy Burris? Candy? I like Candy. She's a sweet little girl. That's all right. She just needs Jesus. But I look at Candy and she uh, did a family. I got my eyes closed. I have to close my eyes so I can think. So I can go back in my computer brain and come up with what I'm trying to say. Beautiful uh, Chris, Christmas portrait. Christmas picture. Her, her husband, her, her son, her daughter, and her. Daughter sitting on her lap. Beautiful little, cute little dress like a beautiful little princess, little girl. But why Candy got her boobs out and a slit up her side, all the way up her side. And then I see my girl Mariah Carey. Same thing. Boobs out, slit all up their side, all their body exposed. My question is why, why, and why? Why do we have to expose all of the beauty that God gave us that's reserved for our husband? We should dress like that to, uh, to um, appeal to our husband. Because when you're dressing like that, you're, who are you? Who are you trying to capture? Who are you trying to allure? That's alluring outfits. Okay, there we go. When you dress in that way and your butt showing and you you got slid up your up your side, you're trying to be alluring. You're trying to be sexy, sexual, and so you will draw to you sexual people that that's what they're looking for. Sexual. They're not. You won't draw to yourself a real man, a real woman. A real well, not woman, you ain't trying to drown a woman. But you won't draw your your attention because they're looking at your boobs and they're looking at your leg. You notice the men, uh, uh, her husband, um, Candy's husband, he was dressed to the nines. Had a tuxedo on his tie and, and all the men in the picture. Now they be laid and stayed with clothes on. Why are all the women got, taking their clothes off? I don't understand. I don't understand. It's the spirit of lasciviousness lust don't do that daughters mm -mm. i've been married four five six seven eight nine ten times you know why because i keep my clothes on modesty is fitting garments for any woman modesty i dress i dress now this outfit that i have on right now lovely blouse i love this little blouse but y'all see this right here this is where it comes down 
It comes down right to the top of my boobs. Now, everybody else would wear it just like that. No, that's not modest. I have on a little sports bra under it. So that when I bend down, you're not seeing all. People know when they bend down, they know all their boobs are showing. They know all their cheats at 730, y'all. 730. So if y'all want to leave, you can leave. Get you in, get y'all on 30. When people bend down and they got all these boobs, they know their boobs are showing. I know what I look like when I put my clothes on because I got a mirror. So I'm not going to put no skin tight pants on without a top to cover it. When I go out, y'all can't see. Y'all can't see. Well, you can see over there. I have on a top. I got a long top because I got leggings on. But I have a long top that cover, covers my behind. Ain't nobody got no business looking at my behind when I bend over on my butt. But my husband. But my husband. And all the man's supposed to be looking at what my husband got. And any other man that's looking to get a wife, he's looking for that modest woman that everybody else ain't seen what she got. What do you want for if everybody else done seen it? Everybody else done seen her boobs. Everybody else done seen her butt. Everybody else done seen the slit of her. What do you want them for? When a man gets ready to get married, he's looking for that modest woman. But if y'all ain't been taught, come on now. They're not teaching this in the church because the pastor's wives look like what I'm saying. I've been looking at some of these pastor's wives' Christmas pictures, and I'm like, what, what, what? The pastors are dressed, but the wives got their boobs up and their lips made up and their face all decked out, and oh, my God, okay. Looking like the world. There's no difference between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. Praise God. And we shall be holy. Okay, you guys, let me get off and quit fussing. See, that's the fussing I do. That's what I'm saying. And when, the, 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 when I say fussing, the Bible says the older women are to teach the younger. Do the Bible say that? So do I get a pass? Because this is what the Bible tells me what I'm supposed to. It seems like one of your streams is having connection issues. Oh, well, my stream is having connection issues. It's time for me to go anyway. Romy! My husband just turned my stuff off. Okay, got to go. Romy! God bless, God bless, God bless. Who's on here, Romy? What happens, what happens is my husband, oh gosh. What happens is my husband turns the Wi-Fi off. It's a switch in his room. And when he, he always trying to save electricity, so he turns everything off when he go to bed. He just went to bed and turned my switch off in the other room. Okay, but I'm gone anyway. I'm gone anyway. I ain't gonna fuss. I ain't gonna fuss at him. I just pray for him. That's just something I got to work with. <laughs> I know, I know. I know it's my husband turned the Wi-Fi off. So, now, but it, but okay, but it's still on because um, I can do it on the Wi-Fi. But I also have the service on my gadget, so that's what's going on. Everything didn't go down. Okay, so I love you. See you tomorrow. God bless. Okay, I'm gonna turn this 